everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking presented by FanDuel Canada. Today's video a little bit different. We're looking at a fantasy hockey mailbag. So looking at the comments and questions you guys have dropped over the past week and a half and giving a little bit more of an in-depth answer other than just a one-line comment than I do on a lot of your guys' comments from the must ads, the must drops, the buy low, sell high, and even the weekend previews. Uh, so there's about eight or nine questions that I'm gonna be looking at here. Let's get right into the video. All right, so the first question we have here, I just traded Eichel Bratt and Drew Doughty for Stamkos and Marner. My league scores are three points per goal, two points per assist, 0.2 points per hit, and 0.25 per block shot. So I saw a lot of comments on this, uh, not for myself, but from other people watching the video on what they thought. A lot of people said, oh, not a great trade. I, I think it's a fine trade. I actually think the, the combo of Stamkos and Marner have a little bit more upside personally. For one, Jesper Bratt, um, obviously a focal point of this trade from the guy you're trading away here. So far to start the year, 31st in fantasy hockey rankings right now, seven goals, 12 assists, six power play goals, and 27 shots on goal. So that shot total, a little bit low for my liking. And then obviously he's been significantly worse since uh, losing Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer from this lineup as of late. Pretty apparent too, over that time span in five on five play, he's eighth in expected goals for and has just one assist in all strengths to show for, uh, for the absence of the two best players on this Devils team. You'd like to see a little bit more from Brat when these two guys are, are down, but it seems like he obviously plays a lot better when these guys are on the ice. He's obviously not going to produce at the, as, at the same level uh, when he's centered by a guy like Michael McLeod. No offense to Michael McLeod, but you're not Jack Hughes, unfortunately. Jack Hughes should be back for the game against Pittsburgh on Thursday. So this video is going out on Wednesday. So one game before that, the Devils just took on the Winnipeg Jets again without Nico Heischer and without Jack Hughes. Heischer did not go on this two game road trip, but maybe he'll be back on the weekend. It kind of seems like that's the case, but if not, I'm sure he'll be back the next week. So I'd still, I'm still fine with trading away Jesper Bratt. Like I think there's going to be pockets of the season where it's going to be Jesper Bratt week, a Tyler Toffoli week, Timo Meyer week. So, and then the consistency between Heischer and Hughes should be there for all those weeks there. Stamco is starting to pick it up a little bit here. The last, uh, the last four games he's played is a point per game. His last four played it's, it's shitty as a Stamco's fantasy owner. If he's, he obviously not on that first line anymore where they started. It was Stamco's point and Kucherov, essentially their power play. Cooper realized he made Maybe need to, you know, switch it up a bit, maybe <laughs> spread out the lines a little bit in terms of the depth. And they did that. And he's still playing well with a guy like Nick Paul and Alex Barry Boulet on that second line. I think Nick Paul was in the must add video I dropped this week. He's starting to become more of a presence in five on five and not just that power play. And remember, Stamkos is on that power play uh, this year. And look, do you look to start the season? He's 67th in fantasy hockey, but he has five goals, 10 assists, uh, 42 shots on goal. So not horrible, just around a point per game as well. And then Marner, Marner's been a lot better recently. So I think getting Marner at this point. I think you're going to start to continue to see his production and his value rise here. So I think getting him is a good is a good call there. And then look, you get a guy like Drew Doughty. He's 65th amongst fantasy hockey defensemen right now. He's not going to move the needle. You know, he had a couple goals early at the beginning of the season. Not a guy I'm going to be relying on here. There's a multiple people that you can pick up on your waiver wire in terms of fantasy hockey defensemen to stream so that you can get two guys like Stamkos and Marner. Jack Eichel, obviously a very good fantasy hockey player. He's 13th right now. Just his shot volume is always going to be there. And that top line on Vegas is mainly the line that's producing and going to be getting a lot of the goals there. So I don't hate the trade. I think if I had to pick a side, I would rather be on the side of Stamkos and Marner. Trading three players for two, I think is always better because you're getting two quality players. And that third player that's going to be in the trade is always going to be guy, the guys either going to drop or eventually end up dropping. All right. So two questions from the same person here. Should I drop Aho and pick up Jarvis? He's on waivers. I play in a points league only. Also, should I drop Sergachev and pick up Sanheim? So let's start with the first question there first. Unless you're talking about Sebastian Ajo on the Islanders, 100% do not drop Ajo for Seth Jarvis. Uh, Sebastian Ajo, clearly the superior player on this team when it comes to real life hockey and fantasy hockey. Let's just look at, compare the last five games, for example. Seth Jarvis, just one goal over that span. His expected goals for 1.3, 10 scoring chances created, five high danger chances created, and his Corsi 4 in that 8% uh, per 60. So not carrying, a, not carrying the puck a ton and not getting a ton of the shot attempts that Carolina is putting on net isn't going towards him. And then Aho in the other light. Uh, a little bit different. <laughs> Three goals, four assists. So seven points total in that five game span. Uh, 1.45 expected goals for, which is second best on the team over that time frame. The same amount of scoring chances and high danger chances created, but 15% Corsi four share um, over the last five games, which means he's just, he's more involved with getting pucks on net in the offensive zone, which is obviously what you want to see. So definitely Sebastian Aho superior to Seth Jarvis when you're looking at fantasy hockey. I know Aho was hurt for a little bit, but you can trust him. He's still going to finish with his 70 to 80 points like he does every single year. Uh, now looking at the defenseman, it might surprise 
surprise some people, but man, Tra if you haven't heard of Travis, Travis Sanheim on this Flyers team, he has been towards his go-to guy in terms of every single situation when you're looking at a defenseman. Power play, penalty kill, five on five. He's playing all the minutes right now and you're benefiting it from it if you have him in fantasy hockey. 18th ranked fantasy hockey defenseman so far to start the year. Looking at his stats, two goals, 12 assists. So 14 points on the year already, almost a pretty much a point per game right now, which is awesome to see. 32 shots on goal, 23 blocks, 15 hits, and is just a minus three. He has a 2.04 expected goals for to start the season. That ranks 15th amongst fantasy hockey or amongst defensemen. That's uh, very solid right now. And then 23 scoring chances created on his own. So very solid numbers for Travis Sanheim there. Now let's look at Mikhail Sergachev, a guy you'd probably think is a little bit more superior, but currently ranks 75th amongst fantasy hockey defensemen. Does not have a goal to speak for just yet. Eight assists on the season, 24 shots on goal. So two already less, three categories less than Travis Sanheim right now. 31 block shots, just the only category that he beats out Sanheim for. And then 11 hits and is dash 12. That was surprising to see for me. Mikhail Sergachev being a dash 12 is definitely concerning. You see a guy continue to pick up minuses from a, on a nightly basis. His ice time will continue to go down a little bit more, especially in certain situations. Obviously can't be trusted in a lot of these defensive situations. Not too many defensemen on Tampa Bay right now can be, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think Travis Sanheim will be the better pickup or will be the better fantasy hockey option when looking at these two guys as well. Also, Sanheim has played 31 more minutes than Mikhail Sergachev and both these guys have played 15 games. So Travis Sanheim, easy decision for me there. Seems like he's going to be the focus defenseman, I guess you could say. He's going to be the premier defenseman on this Flyers team for the rest of the season. They've been very good defensively. I think it'll continue. Very scrappy team. And it seems like he'll continue to be in scoring positions as this Torts Flyers team gets settled in their roles. All right, so the next question here asking about, and more actually giving me advice, maybe just a question I can speak of quickly. Rangers are changing up the lines. Trocek is still playing PP1 and 20 minutes with good peripherals. Might be a decent buy low candidate if he's not on waivers. I absolutely agree with this. Trocek was a drop earlier in the year when he was playing on that third line with Blake Wheeler, but Peter Laviolette has switched up the lines as mentioned above, and I much prefer him in this role playing alongside Artemi Panarin, who currently leads the team in points with 24. That's like a 12 point gap or 10 point gap from the second guy which I believe is Chris Kreider. And then Alex Lafreniere has had a resurgence over the past two weeks. Looks like maybe he's coming into his own a little bit after being scrutinized the entire training camp, but it seems like he's doing a lot better. Seven goals already on the year, probably two forwards that are playing their best hockey right now. So you put Trocek in the middle of them. He's a great complimentary player, can pretty much play with anyone, especially with a guy with Panarin who is has the ability to score goals. We've seen that, but also the ability to pass the puck. And then Lafreniere has a wicked shot. So Trocek will be getting residuals from those guys, you know, being in front of the net with Tim or setting these guys up to score. I wouldn't go out of my way to get him necessarily. Like if he's on your waiver wire, pick him up. He's like 60% rostered in Yahoo Fantasy Leagues right now. So that's definitely something you could consider if you're in not as a deep league, like the 10, 12 man leagues, maybe 14 man leagues he's around, but I doubt it. Definitely an option there, but I wouldn't go to, you know, like don't trade someone crazy for Trocheck right now. If you can get him at a, at a decent price for sure, like a draft pick or maybe a, just a, a center who's overperforming right now or a winger who's overperforming, I think that's definitely uh somewhere to look because also in different leagues people have always said and continue to say he's very useful in leagues where face-off wins count and, and I agree with that he's phenomenal in the face-off dot so yeah Trocheck definitely a buy low candidate right now if you can get him on your team why not if you could pick him up even better NHL same game parlays are back on FanDuel this season offered in every single game every single night unlike most books you can include goals points and shots on goal but the newest feature is the gift goal in the first 10 minutes looking at teams to target for the gift here's the top five teams teams in goals per game last season. Here's a breakdown of goals in the first period from the 2021-22 season as only 17% of games that season didn't have a goal in the first period. What will your NHL SGPs look like at FanDuel this season? All right, the next question about goalies. Any goalies to keep an eye on? Trade for? Question mark. I have Gustafson and Shesterkin currently. So obviously you're going to keep Igor Shesterkin. I know he's hurt right now, so that's a little bit frustrating. You can try and pick up maybe one of the Rangers goalies until he's back. Maybe I would probably lean on. Uh, Louis Domingue's been playing pretty solid, I would say, overall for the Rangers. Not, like, terrible. Not fantasy hockey rosterable, I would say, at this point. He is. And if you watched my buy low, sell high for goalies that I put out last week, I think Gustafson, obviously, he's he's 
ha he's really struggling to start the year, but I do not think he could get much worse at this point. You also will not be able to trade him because he's like the worst ranked fantasy hockey starter right now. His value is extremely no, uh, extremely low, excuse me. I would not drop him at this point. If you need to pick up a goalie, I would definitely, and I said this in my must add, Pyotr Kachekov is my number one pickup right now for fantasy hockey goalies. He's 34% rostered now. He was about 25% rostered last week at this same time. With Anderson out for the unseeable future, this is definitely a good direction to look in. I think Kachekov can be the guy if Anderson is out for maybe, I don't know, another, the next three months, four months, it, he has a blood clot issue. So it really, we have no idea when he's going to be able to come back. It might not even be this season. So I would say Kachekov could be that guy considering Ranta's age if he starts to play a little bit better. And if you look at his last start against the Tampa Bay Lightning, had a shutout. Barring Kucherov didn't play in that game. Tampa Bay would do for a little bit of regression in that one, but still a much better start than we saw all the rest of his four starts or three starts at the beginning of the season. And if you look at his stats last year, his career NHL numbers are very solid. Uh, he has a save percentage above 900. His goals against average hovers around two and a half. And he has like five or six shutouts, career shutouts in probably about 35 to 40 starts. So those are very solid numbers to rely on. Definitely a guy you could pick up if you're looking for a goalie to fill in for Igor or maybe look at one of those Rangers backups. <coughs> All right, the next question here, would you trade Matt Zuccarello for Miro Heiskanen? I'd be getting Heiskanen. So I would absolutely do this trade, I think. Zuccarello has been very solid so far to start this year. 63rd ranked in fantasy hockey points when looking at Yahoo standard scoring. Four goals, 12 assists, one power play goal, 44 shots on goal. So the volume's there for the shots. He has a decent amount of goals. He's always been a guy who's going to have a couple more assists than I think goals uh, in that sense. But very solid start for him. He just got bumped onto that first line with Marco Rossi and Kirill Kaprizov, or Kaprizov, excuse me. Plays on that first power play. And his last five games played two goals, four assists. So really solid numbers there. But Miro Heiskin has been a top 15, top 20 fantasy hockey defenseman pretty much since he's been in the NHL. And right now, uh, he's a 21st best defenseman, 99th best fantasy hockey skater out there right now in terms of points. He has just one goal, nine assists, 31 shots on goal, and then 27 blocks. Now, slow start for Heiskin, 100%, but five points his last five games played. And the biggest thing here, and it's like what I talk about in our draft strategy videos, defensemen are way more valuable than any forward, I would say having a defenseman in like Miro Heiskanen who could still finish within the top seven, I would say, a fantasy hockey defenseman this year is way more valuable than Zuccarello. I don't think we're going to see Zuccarello crack the top 50 of fantasy hockey players. I'd be relatively uh, surprised at that point, especially with how the Minnesota Wild are playing. Dallas Stars are playing much better hockey. Their defense has been stout recently just across the board. Heiskanen, one of the reasons for that as well. And obviously, I'll point out the obvious, Heiskanen is playing way more minutes than Zuccarello is. If you look at their both last five games played, Heiskanen has 125 minutes on the ice, that's 40 more minutes than Zuccarello. Now, that's obvious thing. Defensemen play more minutes than forwards, but if you're in bangers leagues or if you're in leagues that counts blocks, shot, uh, blocks, hits, uh, anything really in bangers leagues that are going to be counting for right now, even shots. Like, sure, Zuccarello has uh, more shots on goal right now than Heiskanen, but Heiskanen has I think probably the second most shot attempts on the team right now. Uh, just a lot of them have gotten blocked, a lot of them missed the net, so I think you'll start to see the points come in there, and I think you'll start to see him get a lot more points consistently here, like a point every night. I could still see him finishing with 60 to 70 points this year. I don't think that's off the table at all. He was one of my favorite Norris candidates or long shots, I guess you could say, before the season started. I think that might be a little too far to reach for right now, like a Norris trophy being the best defenseman this year, but I still think he can have a really good year, and I still think you're getting way better value trading for a defenseman like this. All right, the next question here. Sup, you beauties. What do I do with Markstrom and Huberto? They're just pylons on my roster. Would you trade Malkin for Huberto. So some Huberto questions here. Haven't talked a lot about Huberto since the preseason where I thought he was going to have this big bounce back here. Obviously did not happen. If the person asking me is trading, is asking, should I trade Huberto for Malkin and you're getting Malkin in return? A hundred percent. If there's a person in your league that's doing that, that's just Looney Tunes. That's insane because Malkin's been fantastic and Huberto has been garbage and vice versa. As you could tell with that answer, I would not trade Malkin for uh, uh, Jonathan Huberto. Malkin's been playing much better and it seems like the second line on Pittsburgh will continue to roll here. Uh, for Jacob Markstrom, I would just say hold him. Hold on to him right now. I know he missed the last two games uh, with a little bit of an injury, but he's back in net now. They brought up Dustin Wolf, this guy who's supposed to be taking over the Flames net at some point in the near future. I don't think it's going to be this year. Played an offensive brute in Ottawa. Not the easiest start for him. They lost 4-1. He didn't play fantastic, so there's no reason to keep him up. I think they'll probably send him back down to the AHL. Keep Vladar as the second goalie, leaving Markstrom as definitely someone you can continue to start on a nightly basis in fantasy hockey. Huberto, I would say, is a drop right now. Um, as much as it pains me to say, because I still 
He was so good in Florida, and he's just so shit in Calgary. I don't really know what happened with him, but he has looks like he has very little confidence. Doesn't really seem like any line switch that Ryan Huska or even Daryl Sutter made last year had any sort of effect on him. And you just can't hold on to a guy that's continuously getting benched here. He has just two assists in his last five games. Not worth holding on to at this point. You can drop Jonathan Huberto. If he starts to pick it up again, you'll probably be able to pick him up. So I would leave him and pick up someone way more valuable. Okay, this is one of my favorite questions. Person sent this. I trade away Kucherov and Pasternak. I receive McDavid and Vitrano. So this person who's trying to trade you McDavid and Vitrano, definitely trying to get a little sneaky here because you see Frank Vitrano, the 15th best hockey fantasy hockey player right now. I think he has like 12 goals. He was leading the NHL in goals at one point. He's probably still up there in, in that category. And then McDavid obviously has it has is having a down year. He's 146th right now. Best fantasy hockey player or 146 amongst the fantasy hockey ranks when looking at Yahoo scoring. Probably the lowest we've ever seen McDavid uh, like 12 games into a season since he's been here. But uh, th this trade is a guy trying to, he's trying to get you to buy low on McDavid and then he's trying to sell high on Frank Vitrano, but he did it with an absolutely outrageous ask. He's asking for the second best fantasy hockey player right now and the third best with David Pasternak and Nikita Kucherov. Do not do this trade. Hold on to Kucherov. Hold on to Pasternak. Pasternak is the focal point of this Bruins offense. He leads the team in Corsi shots, expected goals for high danger chances. He's the one getting all the goal scoring opportunities and it's the exact same thing for Nikita Kucherov on the Tampa Bay Lightning. You saw what happened when they played Carolina without Kucherov. They didn't even score a single goal. Now they played Carolina. I'm sure if they played a different team, they would be able to muster up maybe one or two goals, but he is the guy scoring all the goals for this team and that will not change. He continues to dictate the volume, the offensive pace. So I would not do this trade. Keep Kucherov and keep passing. All right, the last question we're going to be answering here. Looking to package Lindholm and Nechuskin for a better center, who could I target? So I originally answered this question and said Sam Reinhart, Sebastian Ajo, and Zibanejad. I don't think someone would trade you Sam Reinhart right now. He's on an absolute heater to score two goals in Florida's most recent game, and he's been fantastic and will continue to be fantastic for this team. So giving those two guys up for Reinhart, maybe not really realistic. The one thing you are getting here, Lekkanen is hurt, and someone else on Colorado is also hurt, but Nechuskin's on this first line with McKinnon and Drew right now and McKinnon's gonna be passing it to Nechuskin a little bit more than Jonathan Drouin if I had to guess wild guess I don't know why there but Nechuskin is gonna be a very valuable fantasy hockey player but if you're trying to bolster your centers I have no problem with you trading him here and I would still try to go for a guy like Zibanejad I would still try to go for a guy like Ajo might be a little bit difficult with Ajo going on this recent point streak Zibanejad I don't think is that far off uh just look I would start looking at some centers who are relatively high on the pre-draft rankings they're just having a little bit of a down year so far right now and try to get those guys Lynn home doesn't carry a ton of weight maybe a little bit considering he still is considered a first line center or second line center on the flames but Nachuskin definitely certainly does so I would still try to go for Zibanejad he still continues to I don't want to say struggle because he's probably right near a point per game but definitely a guy that you could try and get in this one might have to sweeten the offer a little bit more with a draft pick or something like that if you are in a keeper league or a dynasty league of any sort like that but I think Zibanejad is a very interesting option even like I know this might sound crazy Joel Erickson Eck has been awesome for the wild this year and he fills every single stat category so I tried to trade for him as well. He continues to score, continues to fill the stat sheet in every capacity, even shots on goal. So this wild team's struggling right now and he's pretty much the only bright spot on it. So I would maybe even try to trade for him because as the wild continue to get better, he's only going to get better. It's not like he's going to get worse. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of the first fantasy hockey mailbag. Be sure to drop comments so I can do this video yet again. I'll be looking at this one specifically, but also be sure to comment on the must add, the must drop, buy low, sell high, and the fantasy hockey weekend preview that I do every single week. Be sure to download the FanDuel Canada app, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.